As a viewer watching reviews of products on YouTube, uh, watching certain content creators, or maybe potentially being a consumer or a customer of a company, and you're looking up reviews of their products on YouTube, what are the content creators not telling you? What are the companies not telling you? What goes on behind the scenes as far as a content creator getting to a company to receive products from them or a company reaching out to a content creator and sending them products? what is the truth behind all the stuff that goes on and maybe you're a content creator thinking about getting into doing product reviews and how do you reach out to companies and everything well i'm going to talk about a lot of stuff and i'm going to peel back the curtain a little bit um behind the scenes i would say of getting products talking to companies and stuff like that as a small time content creator um that i do pretty much full time i'm a 100 percent disabled veteran so this is all i do as far as doing product reviews it's not like i'm not putting myself at jeopardy or wherever as far as income or anything like that by talking about this stuff which is i think why a lot of content creators don't do it and on top of that i think a lot of the content creators who are going to be honest about this kind of stuff um have already been in the product review space for long enough that they don't know what happens and i would say at the small bottom of the rung of the ladder or whatever for content creators because they've already established themselves on youtube as a reviewer and they're already you know receiving products from bigger brand name companies doing deals or they have enough funds somewhere allocated to be able to purchase certain products or wherever even if it's somewhat at a uh, detriment to their i would say savings or something like that they're still able to you know acquire products without having to rely on a company sending them out because regardless of subscriber size there are some companies that will just not send out a product in fear that the reviewer is a little bit too honest and they know their product is bad so they send them out a product or wherever they know chances are it's just gonna reflect poorly on the company and that's what we've been kind of seeing in this space I've been sitting on this video for a while now and I'm actually re-recording the first part of the video and I'm gonna leave the end portion or wherever the same because I think even though my PTSD was a little bit triggered. I was going through some bipolar motions and stuff like that because I do suffer from bipolar type 2 as well as other mental illnesses uh, due to my military service. But I think you can still, even though I have a little bit of an aggressive tone, you still can understand what I'm saying at the end of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that portion. But I do want to go ahead and specify that that's why that portion seems like I might be a little bit unhinged at the moment or wherever, because a lot of stuff has been going on in the review space if you have not been paying attention. I'm going to put some videos on screen or wherever while I talk. I'm going to leave those listed down in the description. But I keep on seeing these little videos crop up more and more, I think mostly because I do do product reviews on this channel and if you guys don't know i have two youtube channels this one where i obviously do product reviews sometimes gaming stuff but mostly just product reviews for the last i would say about three years now um i've been doing content creation from around 2014 to 2015 or wherever live streaming somewhat doing gaming content and then i switched over like i said to product reviews so i've been in the space i've been acquiring products for streaming and content creation and now i'm trying to get into like camera stuff and other products and stuff but i've dealt with companies buying stuff for my own money and i'll leave a video down in the description as well on screen talking about my history and why i got into content creation for product reviews um when i swapped over or wherever and the reason why i did that that video is very detailed and it's about 10 minutes but it's very detailed on i would say why i have the outlook on products and companies and stuff the way i do um so you can get a little i would say history from that video but moving on to what actually made me want to make this video initially and the reason why I kind of just sat back wherever and then it kind of got reignited again was that there were several videos going out from Marquez. He's a big, obviously, product reviewer. If you're watching product reviews, you probably already know of him. He millions of subscribers on his channel, multiple different channels and stuff talking about, um, you know, I would say electric cars to doing a podcast channel to doing product reviews and stuff like that and he picked up an interesting product and mr who's the boss also picked up an interesting product as well and they both talked about this product and they both talked bad about this product but for some reason marquez is the one that got the flack on the internet or wherever especially on twitter where uh media outlet companies were bashing marquez because he gave the product a bad review and they were saying now the company is going under because he gave a bad review and because he has such a big footprint on 
YouTube or wherever as far as the outreach that he can reach out to viewers or wherever now nobody's gonna buy the product and the product was like 500 or 700 dollars I can't remember off the top of my head but it was a very expensive product it had a new way of doing things it was probably way too ahead of its time because the features and the components or wherever inside the product pretty much just made it not to work so it was a good idea but charging that much for just an idea and not being able to execute the idea correctly um it shouldn't have been i would say available to the wide public especially at that price point and that's what a lot of people missed when they did the news or wherever on his article that's why he had to go ahead and you know make a follow-up video pretty much tldr of his follow-up video was if a company does not make a bad product then the reviewers will not make a bad review if the company does not release a product period the review would never be done so if you're releasing a product as a company and you know it's bad and you're charging obscene amounts and of course this is very on the extreme side as far as how much the, that product in particular cost then you would not be getting obviously bad reviews and that's why he was pointing out and i think a lot of people are missing what he was talking about in his video as far as what a reviewer is supposed to be doing when a consumer or a potential customer or consumer is watching their video review of a product they're telling they're supposed to as far as the content grader goes is supposed to tell that viewer who is a potential customer the downsides of the product is there any downsides is the product going to help your workflow or is it going to help you know something around the house something around the office is it going to just be a cool little toy little add-on or something like that it's not necessarily necessary but it's you know worth the purchase or something like that is it supposed to do what it's supposed to do you know stuff like that like that's what the reviewer is supposed to do if they're reading spec sheets and i keep telling you guys this um if you're a returning subscriber that if a reviewer is getting something from a company and they said the company sent it out but they did not say or they say in some way shape or form that the company did not see the video before it goes live they didn't tell me what to say this is my only thoughts and opinions but then they start telling you all the little functionalities of the product almost like they're reading a spec sheet and if you go to the company's website or the amazon listing or wherever this the product is sold and you can literally read verbatim what that website has or so that spec sheet has or maybe you bought, purchased the item yourself and you can read the manual then that content creator nine times out of ten is lying i'm not saying all of them are lying out there on the platform there's a lot of content creators that review a lot of products and they might just not know what to do they got offered a free product so the chances are if they never really done it before or they new to the space they kind of going to lean towards reading the spec sheet or leading reading to uh the amazon listing or what's on the website or wherever because they don't really know what they're doing as far as their review goes they don't know that you're supposed to be giving a user experience on the item not telling you verbatim leading spec sheet after spec sheet at the line at the line at the line and you never hear about okay what does that equate to me using the product for, for example fine fine is a sponsor of the channel they send out products and stuff like that i don't get any monetary value off of it unless somebody purchases it through my amazon link uh, affiliate links and then they add a little bit of, on top of it or wherever to show that you know they know that people are using my link to purchase you know something from fine fine but other than that if you pick up a fine fine microphone or wherever i'm not gonna sit there and get anything off of it if you don't use my affiliate link so there's no incentive really for me to talk good or wherever about it because you could always be like okay cool and not click a link or wherever and purchase it or not purchase it so it's not a detriment to me and then on top of that it's not going to be a large sum or wherever that's going to you know fill my pockets or fill my bank account so it doesn't really matter to me or not the more important thing is that fine fine sends out a product for me to cover fine fine is a somewhat i would say popular company in the budget realm so if i can cover a fine fine product chances are my video is going to do decently as far as views go so that's like the only really benefit so when i said about the fine fine ample tank tank 3 being a little bit too sensitive and everything and it picking up humming noises or wherever if you have it on a microphone boom arm next to your pc or hard drives or anything like that 
it's going to pick up those rumb rumbles and stuff. I've never seen anybody really talk about that experience. And there's only certain people that go into depths or wherever about the microphones. But unfortunately, when they do it, they only talk about frequency responses and stuff. They don't really talk about using the microphone or wherever in a day to day instance. Whereas me, when I get a product, I try to use it for about a week or two depending on what time the product comes in and what type of product it is or wherever if it needs that much time to get your first initial i would say assumptions of the product and using it in your workflow and stuff so that's what i'm talking about when people get these products from companies they sit there and they just go over basically like i said the spec sheet the 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 script that a company is going to send out to the content creator and be like hey these are the talking points these are what uh, we want you to talk about and stuff like that. And it's fine if you want me to, uh, I would say, you know, say something about this special feature or something or what sets apart the product or something. I'll put on screen simply when a company reach outs to me or wherever. This is uh, roughly what I tell them or wherever, depending on the type of product it is, whether it's like a microphone or, you know, something other else or wherever for content creators or streamers or something like that. But this is like the general outline, I would say, of what I send a company. And I already tell them, hey, you ain't going to see the video before it goes live. If you can't, you know, if we can't get past that point, then I'm not, you know, working with the company. But like I said, a lot of people will say that they will say that to the company. But then when you get the review and you watch the review of the product, everybody's saying the same thing. The same thing that happens with the Elgato product. Elgato is really big in, I would say, the streaming space and content creator space. They're, they hand out partnerships left and right to content creators who are brand safe meaning that they don't ever talk bad about Elgato. You notice that anytime somebody talks about a drawback from Elgato products, it's from a, oh, it's okay standpoint. You know what I'm saying? They baby Elgato because they don't want to hinder their relationship or their possibility of working with them. Because in the streaming space, Elgato is the only company that has a somewhat a foothold on decent products. The problem with those decent products from Elgato is that they overcharge for a lot of their products. I would say 99% of their products are overpriced, um, two to three times, sometimes even four in some cases. But the problem is, is that you have all these content creators who are not just being honest. They would be like, I'm an Elgato partner. Thanks for Elgato for partnering with me or something like that. Here's a review on this product or wherever. Here's what I like about a product and stuff. And you never really see too many negatives. If it's something that's negative, it's something really stupid and minute. Like, oh, this, you know, portion doesn't come with a detachable cable or it doesn't have a mounting hole on the back or wherever of the stream deck. And we've been asking for that for years and stuff like that. And it's like, there's more pressing issues with Elgato software that crashes, that bugs, that causes issues. Hence, before I even started recording this video, I had to restart Wavelink and Stream Deck. And there's so many times where the Stream Deck just says Wavelink is not open, even though both of them are. I've restarted my computer. I've tried updates and stuff like that. I've had to end them in Task Manager and reopen them multiple times for them to realize that both of them are opening and running at the same time. And this is a consistent issue. And there's issues with Elgato product softwares having to be open on the main primary monitor for in order for it to work correctly, like opening up VSTs and Wavelink. But I have two other monitors. I can't have it open on my primary monitor because that's where I full screen my games. So if I need to go and fiddle with like a program wherever on another screen, that's why I have two other monitors. I can't keep on closing my, my game down or wherever, pausing whatever I'm doing on stream. That's not the whole point of the software. And then you're trying to make it a little bit easier with Stream Decks and the Stream Deck Plus controlling their represented, I would say their software, whether it be Wavelink or Stream Deck. And you can't even really do that. But when you watch all the, like I said, Elgato Partners videos, nobody talks about the frustration nobody goes to the forums to reddit to elgato forums to youtube videos or wherever of people who are not getting any kind of benefit from working with elgato and seeing all the negative about it and what elgato has done is cherry picked their brand safe content creators in order to i would say overshadow and just consume all the bad uh, press or anything bad or wherever because when you look it up all you're gonna see is all the brand safe content creators you're not gonna see the little guy you're probably not gonna see somebody like me and there's been times where i've done videos comparing 
Elgato products to other products out there and had showed proof and justification for my, I would say, hate for Elgato and what they're doing over there. And there's people in the comment section defending Elgato. For what? They're overpriced. For me telling you as a, con as a consumer who bought their product, as, as another potential consumer buying their product, telling you that it's overpriced and they need to lower their prices, how does that affect you in a negative way? Why wouldn't you want to get a product at a lower price? That doesn't make any sense. So again, it's companies sending out people to personally attack, and I'll put on screen what they're doing, but they're personally attacking the content creators in the comment sections. And they'll falsify reviews. They'll falsify, I would say, comments or wherever on other people's reviews or their videos or something. They will dislike videos. Representatives will go out and dislike videos. Representatives will go out and make other videos or wherever discrediting those content creators. Hence why this is kind of why I'm making the video because I saw a video recently that that's what exactly what a company did. And another reason why I was making this video was because I had a comment on one of my videos talking about a comparison of all the low profile boom arms from a new subscriber who said they subscribed and they talked about a lot of issues with the IX tech company as far as them leaving a frustrating review on their products for their low profile boom arm and their microphone. And I tried to pin that comment on that YouTube video because it was a very informational. His name was Adam. And I told him in my reply that I was going to post this and pin it or wherever on that video. And um, thank you for telling me all the information or wherever about his woes as far as the microphone had a lot of cracks and stuff into it, just unpolished, should not have shipped out or wherever. There was no quality checks being done on the microphone boom arm or the microphone. He specified that on the website of IX Tech. IX Tech then deleted his review and then he posted that same review on Amazon and IX Tech went either paid somebody or, or some, one of the representatives somehow posted a review wherever that was contradictory to his review in order to smooth out or level the playing field or wherever and talked about great about all the stuff that he talked about negative. And it's like, how is all this happening? And then, like I said, his comment is no longer on the video. I can't pin it. It shows up in my notifications or wherever as my drop down bell or wherever for as a content creator. When somebody comments on my videos or something, I can see that. I can't see it in my creative studio. I can't pull it up on my phone or wherever. I can't I can't see any comments that were deleted or are taken off or anything like that. So one or two things is happening. Um, either Adam, for whatever reason, deleted his own post. I don't know why he would have because, he, again, he typed out a very long comment or wherever about all his frustrations and everything and he articulated his speech very very well and clear and it he deleted it for some reason which again that just doesn't seem right to me i could be wrong if he's watching this video he can leave a comment down below um because he probably doesn't even know it's been deleted or wherever but like i said i had responded to him and then while i was streaming i had responded to him and when i got off stream i went to uh, make a, this video wherever about two weeks ago or something by now. And when I went to screen grab or screenshot or wherever his comment, which I admittedly should have done earlier, uh, that's when I ran into the issue of can't find a comment. And what I think is, is that based off of what he was saying, I think IX Tech deleted the comment. And you might wonder how somebody could do that. Well, if somebody dislikes somebody's comment, more times than like three, four, five times or wherever, YouTube would automatically delete the comment because they're seeing that so many people are disliking the comment that that means that this comment is, you know, bad or something's wrong with this comment or wherever that our system is not automatically picking up being held for review or spam or whatever it is. So it would get deleted if enough people spam the dislike button on somebody's comment. And what ends up happening is I think IX Tech did that. The reason why I say that is because they never put my microphone review on their channel. They asked for my low profile boom arm to be put it on their channel. I didn't bash their microphone too, too much. I just said that it was kind of like overpriced, um, but I never had any imperfections or wherever on the microphone. But what I did notice and what I need to tell you guys about is that IX Tech so was supposed to send out the white version of their low profile boom arms and possibly other ones and the white version of their microphone. They let me know that it was going to be released in February. 
I have yet to receive any package from them after doing the microphone review. And even after doing the microphone review, I told them I was waiting and expecting those packages. No kind of correspondence since then at all. Um, they've taken everybody else's pretty much review of their microphone and put it on their own YouTube channel. You will not find my YouTube video up there. If they have put it up there, it's not to my knowledge because they asked specifically for people's videos. So where, why is my video not on your channel? because I didn't really talk glowingly about it like everybody else that did a review for your products, especially after the low profile boom arm one, I, I don't know. And then on top of that, the company told me that in February it was gonna get released. They told me that back when I did, when I was working with them to do the low profile boom arm, that would span of months. So they knew it was already gonna happen. They knew it already was gonna be released. I was told that I was gonna be one of the first people to get that those products the time frame rolls around comes near nothing at all so i had to reach out again myself not the company myself in order to just even receive the microphone for a review that i was already promised and it was in the wrong color when i asked them why they said they only had certain ones allocated to go out to content creators after that they didn't have any packages or wherever set aside for content creators companies will do this in order to make sure that they have um, advertisement, I would say products or wherever to get content creators to be able to review. Them. The problem with this and what I, I think Adam has run into is the fact that nine times out of 10, when a smaller company does this, it's because they've physically looked at the devices and made sure that it was in top tier condition and they only set those aside for the reviewers, for the content creators. And what the consumer gets at the end of the day is the rejected models it's the ones that have all the blemishes imperfections all that stuff like adam i would say uh received when he purchased it and the bad part about it is is that when a customer has that they have pictures or they talked about it in a detailed review or something and your customer service just completely ignores and you start deleting reviews and doing all the stuff that ix tech's done instead of just replacing the damn product excuse my french but it's just the truth just replace the product Listen to your consumer. Why are you doing all this or wherever instead of just being like, hey, we messed up, own up to it, replace the product. It doesn't make any sense. So again, I don't know if I'm gonna work with IX Tech in the future because I'm having to go through pulling teeth just to get products that I was promised way beforehand and I was supposed to get them before they were released so I could have the video upon their release. And like I said, it's we're like at this point halfway through May and nothing. But I do want to go ahead and specify that this is what happens when content creators who are smaller or wherever on the rung again for content creators who are trying to get into doing product reviews and stuff. Be very, very careful with these companies because these companies are using you to in order to advertise their products. So you have to be very, very careful who you receive products from and what companies you are willing to work with, especially when they're not paid opportunities. And especially when you're starting out or wherever, the people that are gonna be around when you first start out are going to be the loyal ones. So you have to be 100% honest because if you're already losing your loyal fan base or subscriber base or wherever before you even get over a thousand subscribers or 500 subscribers and you're lying away, lying your way to get to the top or wherever, you're gonna be a flash fire content creator, meaning you're gonna suddenly blow up. And then once you have worked with a lot of companies who are pretty much snakes oil, oil salesmen, you're gonna be exposed. And then you're just gonna fade into obscurity. And that's what we've seen with a lot of content creators with TikTok and Vine and all these other content creators that you might have been like, hey, I wonder what happened to this content creator. I remember when this person used to be so big, their viewership has tanked, you know, stuff like that. It's because they've been exposed with working with really bad companies. And a lot of them extend even to the higher echelon, I would say, of content creators here on YouTube. Jace Two Cents, another dude that just did Herman uh, Body like chair or something like that. I'm not really sure of the, of the guy or whatever, never really seen his com uh, content until like all this, you know, review debacles have popped up. And this company that, you know, makes headrests for, for the seats. Again, all those videos will be linked down in the description so you can see 
the videos that I'm talking about, wherever, even content creators who have a decent subscriber base or wherever up into like the millions are still ha running into issues like Jay's two cents. Like I said, Marquez, the guy with the, the Herman Ch Miller chair or wherever, and several other content creators out there who bash companies for making bad products and the companies do just nefarious things to try to get the content creators to be silenced, discredit them, tacking their character or something, to pretty much defamation of character, especially with the Herman Body chair person or wherever. That's pretty much what he was doing um, as far as that company or wherever in response to him. And it's just like when you're a content creator and you're trying to, like, like I said, get into product reviews or you're a person watching reviewers and stuff like that, be very, very careful nowadays because people will do anything. They will brown those a company so hard in order to work with them. I've seen disgusting things being done just to be to work with the likes of Elgato and other companies out there. And it's like it doesn't make any sense to me when I'm watching a person because I'm able to profile a person. I've taken a lot of psychology classes. I was in the information technology field, so I had a secret clearance working in the military. I was a 25 Bravo working un pretty much directly under our post or bases general. And I worked on setups for generals while being deployed and, you know, command sergeant majors and the like. And I'm telling you that having to be able to profile somebody discern their truth behind the mask that people wear especially going for a bachelor's or in social work or wherever to be a peer-to-peer -peer support specialist for people who had mental disabilities from you know being in the military and everything i've been taught to be pretty much discern people from a civilian sector and the military sector and i am telling you it's it's laughable that people think they can edit stuff out or they can fake it on a live stream or they can fake it in videos and so many people are falling for it so many viewers are falling for it when you see somebody faking a review and then you look at the comment section and everybody's just praising the content creator and it's like do you not see this person is lying straight to your face because essentially when a company sends out a product or wherever a couple things happen either like i said with ix tech they send out an allocated you know thing or wherever that's set aside for content creators to be able to do reviews that's kind of get becoming more popular as com companies start to be able to manufacture mass products and stuff like that especially if you live in a i would say popular country like the united states or something a lot of companies have stuff you know in the states or wherever so they can s send to you but there are companies that you know are only i would say are overseas and a lot of their stuff is not necessarily readily available through amazon or something like that so they will send you something from overseas or wherever but it might take you a little bit longer i've had that one instance but the product was dead on arrival and the company just refused to send me another product or wherever and just pretty much waited for me to purchase another one of their products in order to send me a new version of the product or wherever that hopefully wouldn't be dead on arrival which just didn't make any sense so i just wiped my hand in the situation and we parted ways and i never really done a review on the product or anything because it's broken it's dead on arrival doesn't hold a charge so how am i supposed to what am i supposed to do you know what i'm saying and on top of that, unfortunately, they're only staged, stationed overseas in Asia, so there's nothing I can do about it, which sucks because the company seems like they make really good products. It's just, you know, that's the nature of the beast. That's why I say in the beginning of my reviews or wherever and that little uh, disclaimer portion that everything that's man made is not perfect. Your your experience is going to be different than mine. You could have ordered the same product or whatever the company sent out to me and never had an issue. You see what I'm saying? So when people receive products like that, wherever nine times out of ten that's typically what i think a lot of people think that goes on behind the scenes what truly goes on behind the scenes is that like i said a lot of those companies they're stationed in europe they're stationed in asia if a content creator lives in another continent or lives in the u.s or something like that it would take months to do uh i would say you know overseas shipping and stuff like that and like all this stuff so they already send mass products to the u.s and they're sitting in a warehouse somewhere and nine times out of 10, Amazon is able to ship it to that person the next day or, you know, uh, within the week. So what they do is they tell the content creator to purchase the product. And then once the content creator purchases the product on Amazon, they give the content creator gives that order number to the company. The company then sees the order number and refunds their purchase 
back to them so they get that product for free because this will be a quicker way of them receiving the product and they can do the product or wherever whenever the content creator receives it and in a timely manner now people will say on youtube that this is a non paid for review they send it out for free technically this is a moral uh, i would say moral gray area it's up to you as the reviewer um to see if this is a paid opportunity or not it's up to you as the viewer to think if this content creator is now lying to you because like i said a lot of these companies are not based where these content creators are and it's easier to do the amazon thing than to do the overseas like i said country continent you know thing so it's up to you like i said the viewer to know about this because content creators are not going to tell you about the whole purchase off amazon get the refund on their purchase or wherever the company sends the product or wherever through amazon for free and then they do the review on it so it's up to you to believe the content creator or not when they say the company sent them out to for free it's up to you with being that moral uh, moral gray area whether you believe that that's not a paid for review or something like that because essentially no money is technically changing hands it's just that you're getting refunded your purchase so it's not like they paid you money directly and was like okay now we're sending you out the product you purchased the money and you're just getting a refund you see, you see what i'm saying so it's up to you if you believe that that's a paid for review but th those are typically are the two things that usually happens with the review the third is i would say blatantly obvious you the, com the content creator goes out and purchases the product with their own money to give the uh, to do the review to give the potential consumer of the product a uh, informed decision on their purchase by spending their own money on the product so those are like i said the typical things that are going to happen wherever as far as doing a review and like i said i'm gonna peel back the curtain a little bit um i've had all the experiences here on the channel i've had companies like i said send stuff out and i had to wait like two months wherever for that product to arrive dead on arrival i have had companies send out stuff like ix tech without me having to purchase anything uh joby is another company that send out stuff fine fine is another company that does send out stuff but i also have to purchase through amazon links or wherever and they refund um just because the the availability of the product or wherever and again where i'm stationed and stuff and where their own shipping stuff you know ships to but then again like i said i've had stuff to show up at my doorstep from them so it just depends on what the consumer believes pretty much what the youtuber or content creator is telling them and that's why i said a lot more people need to start taking more psychology classes and being able to profile these people who are putting on masks because a lot of these content creators who are below i would say 10,000 subscribers who are doing product reviews or maybe you know doing something else and then a company reaches out to them and they're like yeah sure i'll review your product on my channel they're clamoring because they don't know what to do when it comes to product reviews so they will watch other reviewers and be like oh they said that this company has no you know say so on their video but essentially what they don't realize is that that person is lying because they're reading the script that the company has sent out to them because a lot of companies have sent me out scripts for videos and told me what to say in videos and stuff and i told them no this is how i do my videos and they've been like oh okay and then the video comes out and the reason why they've done that is because the products are trash and like i said with the mayano products all of them are pretty much trash except for the software but the software is a little bit lacking in a lot of areas but it's still a little bit better than what is available to other i would say microphone companies out there or wherever that don't include software so at least they somewhat do but like i've said in a previous video the little audio mixer sent out to me died it, it does not work anymore it's, it's it's not even a paperweight i might as well just throw it in the trash but i let my one-year-old play with it or wherever but other than that their microphone the build quality is trash it's it, especially for the price point that they're selling it for and not to mention i forget what else they sent the low profile boom arm or wherever I did it in the, the comparison video of the low profile boom arms all of those boom arms or wherever are just copying something else or wherever and they're charging obscene amounts for it because they put their name on the side when the microphone boom arm probably costs around 20 dollars to make because i've seen that literally same microphone boom arm around 50 dollars you got to be very very careful when it comes to these smaller content creators because they'll do anything they'll brown nose they'll lie straight through their teeth they'll do obsidious things underneath the table 
just to get your viewership and it's not only for you to purchase stuff with their affiliate links because they get money but they want to show hey company i am a brand safe content creator because i don't go against the brand i'm all about the brand and they don't want to get blacklisted and you can look up what that means or wherever and they want to be brand safe and you can look up what that means and it's not even what the typical i would say terms actually supposed to mean it just means that they play nice they never give a bad review it's very very uh i would say rare where a content creator who's actually 100 percent honest with their reviews is reviewing something that's popular that most people would probably actually buy depending on the realm of what the content uh, creator is reviewing wherever and the potential market like if it's a chair a laptop or you know something for content creation or something for streaming or something like that so again to wrap it all up i'll go ahead and let that little rant person play thank you guys for coming to my squid talk i guess i could say um but i just kind of wanted to put this video out there don't really have a i would say product review for this week or wherever but i did want to address this because it's been weighing on me heavily like not talking about this stuff and just constantly seeing these companies treating content creators bad treating their own employees inside the company with the ek water blocks and the jace two cents and the gamers nexus like stuff and then seeing what the gamer nexus just recently put out about the um asus or wherever and their little handheld and stuff and it's just like companies keep on putting out really bad products and it's only taking some small content creators and when i say small i don't mean like as far as their subscriber count and their viewership i mean a small quantity of content creators who are actually being honest with their reviews are talking about it but then when you look at the vast majority of content creators out there they're all lying to to protect these companies they know the product is bad they there's nothing they can say or whatever the product is bad and they still just be like yeah this product's good go go spend your money on it yeah it has some drawbacks you know it's it's okay though but it's still worth it and it's like no i just three years i've been doing this man and it's just like seeing those people progress and they're just lying and they're getting hundreds of thousands of views on their videos people commenting i don't know if they're paid for comments or views or whatever but people saying they're gonna pick it up or thanks for the nice review or whatever honest review and all that stuff and you're like if you look at reddit forums like i said if you look at their own forums if you look at the reviews of those products a lot of these companies are doing shell companies or wherever to mitigate their bad reviews or like i said in the ix tech situation where they're having allocated products for reviews to only send the best of the best to the reviewers and like i said i imagine they probably dislike that dude's comment or wherever to get it removed off of youtube because there was no reason i wouldn't delete it myself and like i said after typing all that out i seriously doubt the commenter himself deleted it it's still a possibility but i seriously doubt it. the more likelihood is that ix tech is watching my videos because i've covered their products a lot and i had their stuff tagged or wherever for that video because it did include their microphone boom arm they already watched the channel and stuff like that they saw the comment and they just send the masses to dislike it to get it removed it's crazy to me i i don't i know i say it at the end of this rant portion but if a company did not make a bad product then there would be no reason to make a video bashing the product it's not to the content creators are supposed to make really good videos or wherever. I'm just brown nose in a company. No, a company is supposed to make good products. And if you're contacting a content creator on your own volition to send them out, out, out a trash product that you know that is bad and they get the product and you expect them even knowing that is bad to still give a good review. Do I even need to say more? I'll catch you guys in the next one. Only are gonna talk to people who have a certain amount of subscribers and a certain amount of viewers or wherever per video or per monthly or something like that. So they're not gonna even gonna reach out to you in the first place. So all this brown nosing you're doing, accepting all the products or wherever, talking highly or wherever, it's gonna only reflect poorly on you especially if a brand out there is actually a genuine brand and know that the company is uh 
I would say have evil intentions or whatever behind releasing bad quality products, they are not going to work with you anyways. You know what I'm saying? And it's not good and it reflects poorly on you when you're going to have people come to you because they subscribe to wherever trusting what you're saying as a content creator because you have the product and they're interested in something similar they go out and buy a product and they realize it's trash uh, enough of those times happening you're going to get review bombed on your video you're going to get a whole bunch of dislikes you're going to have a whole bunch of people complaining in the comments and you're going to look dumb like well i I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't have any experience with that. The product is perfectly fine. Sorry that you had that experience. Like, and they're not going to be honest about it because they don't know. Because like I've said multiple times, when a comp when a person reviews a product, it's just going to sit on the shelf or they're going to throw it away. One of the two. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to replace whatever they have in their setup nine times out of 10, or it's going to be useless unless it's like a microphone that they can use for a microphone comparison later. They're going to resell it or send it back to somebody or, you know, do something along those lines behind the scenes because they don't need the product because they know it's bad. And they're just getting away with it, review, reviewing these products or wherever. And you, like I said, as a consumer, as the viewer are getting caught up in it because again, these people are not being honest. They're not telling you straight up how these things go or wherever behind the scenes. Again, people, you know, look to, I would say, content creators and streamers and stuff like that to get the information. But now you can't even trust them because, again, they're browsing those in companies hoping that they don't get blacklisted or become on a brand's uh, not safe uh, for brands or wherever because they are going to sit there and actually be a good decent human being and actually have morals you know what i'm saying and then i'm not even going to get into getting paid for a review because in all honesty even if i get to a point where i can get paid for a review i wouldn't expect you guys to trust me even if i'm if i'm doing paid work because at this end of the day at some point you got to realize like hey the person's getting money you know what i'm saying even if this person's doing an honest review of course, if a brand is paying them, they're going to want to be nice or wherever and be a little bit more lenient on the video because they're hoping that they can get that paycheck again because relying on YouTube AdSense is not the way. That's why so many people do affiliate links and stuff like that to hopefully, you know, get money. So that's the problem when it comes to product reviews on YouTube. The smaller content creators are brown nosing. They're not really care about giving you truthful information or wherever on the platform. Companies are doing nefarious things or wherever behind the scenes or wherever to keep their brand looking spotless and clean or wherever. So you can continue to spend your money on products that are overpriced. And honestly, that are charged like two or three times the actual action price should be. And on top of that, like I said, they're garbage anyways. So I try here on the channel, if I get a product or wherever, regardless if I spend my own money or a company sends it out, I try to tell you guys, don't get it if it ain't worth it or wherever, or maybe it's worth it, but it has some cons or wherever. So you can be aware of it again, making informed decisions. You see what I'm saying? Like these companies, you got to be very, very careful when you're reviewing these products on YouTube, uh, reviewers and consumers and, and viewers of these people. Be very, very careful when people are just brow nosing every single video that they're doing and they're pumping out so many videos per week and videos per month and stuff like that of these products. And they're saying this company sent out this product to me. This company sent out this product to me. I'm just letting you know about this company, this company, this company, this company, this company. And in every single video, there's not one where they said their product is bad or they don't recommend it. The number one thing is, and again, I hate to bring this up, but this is a perfect example. I know Cozy Christopher is, uh, I would say, been blowing up on YouTube inside the content creator space or whatever for product reviews. He he reviewed a headphone from Jinko or wherever that I reviewed. And in my video, I trashed the product because they sent it out to me doing an Amazon uh funniness and i purchased with my own money their older version of the headphones and i still use it today i, I still have the jinko headset and i still use this one today the one i reviewed was the black and orange one and i i raked that thing over the coals because it's trash it's terrible the headset was already falling apart when i first opened the box and the guy did a review and talked about it was really good for the money and stuff like that sound good on bluetooth i don't know what it sounded like there on my move mic but um, take that microphone out and have these just as some you know lightweight over the head headphones walking around the house and stuff like that like they definitely sound good enough for that and these cushions even though I'm probably yelling because I put those cushions and they do pretty good a job of sound isolating but um, even though they're not like memory foam or something like that they feel comfortable so overall I think these are definitely worth way more than the money 
Um, I think these can be your main headphones if you are on a budget. Um, if you have the budget, of course, to get something like the you know Nova Pro wireless headphones and of course get something like that. But if you're not trying to spend $300, you won't miss out on any experience by using these. Um, again, keeping in mind with return on investment, if you don't have them in the room to compare them, you can't really say that one is better than the other. And I'm saying that those are good enough to purchase and good enough to be your main headphone. So what that that headset was not even worth the components it took to make. It, it was a waste of time and they're making the headset. Whoever's making the headset, send, I feel bad for them sending an assembly line or wherever trying to make that headset, making more. That's the product should not even exist on the face of the planet. That's how bad that product is. And this guy said that he recommends the product. And once I heard him say that and seen the other reviews or wherever of similar products that I have reviewed, I'm like, this guy is, is, is just another one of them. It's just another bot in the assembly line of sitting there doing product reviews. And like I said, I don't want to really want to name drop, but that's a perfect example. And I got nothing against the guy. It's just the truth. If I'm, if I got my hands on a product and I'm reviewing it and I'm telling you it's bad, it's for a reason. And he's just saying, well, it's a cheaper product or wherever you kind of get what you pay for and all this stuff is like the product shouldn't even exist at any price point. I think in the video, I talked about getting it from Dollar Tree and letting like your son use it or wherever he, at the time he was less than a year old. I wouldn't even do that at this point. I threw that away. I didn't even sit there and say anything to the company. I just said, hey, here's the product review. I sent them the link. They never contacted me again or wherever. Another company that is the parent company of Jinko contacted me and they sent me out speakers that I'm probably going to review. But they, I, I threw that, I threw that away. It's not even worth, like I said, the material it's made out of. They should not be able, it should be illegal to sell that. Just like I talked about with the Vivitar little two byte or whatever from Walmart, it should be illegal to sell that. There should be charges pressed and people should be going to jail. That's how bad the product is. I know people will say I'm over exaggerating, but it's the truth. And this guy is endorsing it just because it's a budget item. You get what you pay for. You should know that if you get this headset or wherever, nobody should be purchasing that headset. That headset should not get any sales, period. That is the truth. But people won't say that stuff because again, they're trying to be brand safe. They don't want to get blacklisted. They don't want to be known for that guy on YouTube who sits there and flames products from companies because it's up to the company to make a good product. It's not up to the reviewer to give a product a good review. They should be giving the honest review. They should be giving the real world's experience with using a product because you as a consumer are going to purchase a product and have a real world experience with it. So that's our job. Our job is not to do stuff for the company, do B-roll and product shoots and, and product shots and stuff like that, because that's paid work. These companies are not paying us. They're giving us free products for us to review in hopes that we can tell our fan base that we worked hard, blood, sweat and tears, money spent and everything, bank accounts being negative and all that stuff to make these product reviews. Hours of editing, hours of shooting, getting lighting, getting cameras, lenses, all that stuff. We paid for all that stuff. They didn't do anything for it. So why are we doing this stuff for free for them? They're not paying you for a review. They're sending out products for free, even though I purchased this amount of money, but you get the point. They, they, they send out products for free. So why is it up to us to sit here and brown nose them? They're relying on us. It, it's just appalling. And then, like I said, I seen the Marquez thing or wherever stuff with him blowing up on the internet not too long ago. And then the Jay's two cents stuff where the companies aren't even paying their own employees, let alone honoring contracts where they owe people money. They're not sending out products for reviews and stuff. It's a similar situation to have with IX Tech that Jay's two cents talk about EK water blocks and stuff. They're supposed to be sending out these products months ago. They knew about it. That was releasing in February. It's now May. It's May the 5th. They knew that it was launching in February. I didn't even get the product beforehand. I still got sent out the black version of the microphone instead of the white one that I was promised. And like I said, not to, not to mention the comment or whatever on the YouTube video. It's crazy to me. And like I said, you have these YouTubers and, com and content creators or wherever and TikTokers and all that stuff or wherever getting on these products for free or wherever, just giving away 
hours of work and scripting and editing and, and adding b-roll and all this stuff wherever for products and doing all this stuff time away from family time away that you could be doing other things that would be more profitable for you as a content creator or just enjoying life wherever not having to make a video because they're sending out products for free and they're not paying you my camera slider wherever for my b-roll that's almost four hundred dollars ZVE 10 Sigma 16 millimeter. That's like a, a over a thousand dollar combo. The the Alpha 6100, the 30 millimeter from um, Sigma, wherever for my top down, my Sony ZV one, wherever for my live streams. The lights, wherever in my space. These desks that I have. The computer that has a 3080 in it. When I purchased it, or wherever the 40 series wasn't out yet, but that was pretty much the top of the line at the point. The, the monthly subscriptions I have for, for my editing software, all that stuff or wherever. These companies are not paying you for a video. So why do you need to lie? You're spending your heart on money. Why do you need to lie? Just so you can constantly get products. It's appalling. Stop it. Bad reviews do not make a company go under. Bad reviews is the job of reviewers. The company's job is to make good products. I'm done.